All right, the purpose of this video is to share how I have been using the OpenAI GPT tools in programming. I'm using it a little differently than I see a lot of other people using it, and I think the method, the, the sort of workflow that I'm using is helpful in that it solves a few problems that people run into just using chat GPT, trying to program and having a long linear conversation where the bot eventually ends up getting confused and then you have to kind of start over and reteach it what you're doing and then it gets confused and it's mixing things up and overriding bugs that you already fixed earlier and you know you run into all sorts of problems eventually so this is kind of how I've been using it a little bit more effectively so I start my process in chat GPT refining the idea and getting the boilerplate code but that's all I'm going to use chat GPT for um, so here I've asked it, I said, let's write a to-do app in Flask. The features are add, edit, and remove tasks, mark tasks as complete, completed tasks are grayed out and moved to a separate collapsible list at the bottom of the UI automatically, simple modern design with responsive layout in dark mode, because it should all obviously be in dark mode. And then this is something I like to add to my prompts. Please ask any clarifying questions before proceeding if necessary. Okay. And I've already run this, it's a little slow, so I ran it already. Actually, the last take got messed up, so that's why I've run it already. So before we proceed, I would like to clarify a few points. So it's asking me now to clarify, do we want to store these tasks in a database or should they be stored temporarily in memory? These are great questions. Are there any specific requirements for user authentication? And does, do I have any specific technologies in mind for the front end? So what I told it is, let's just store it in, for, in memory for now. No authentication necessary. Use something simple. And, and for the front end, use something that's simple to implement in a Python. So this is also good to keep in mind. Don't get it too complicated. Like maybe we do want to store this in a database. But for now, let's just get the first little couple bits working. So don't give it too much to do right out of the gate, you know. And you'll get used to kind of how much you can ask it for. But uh, try to keep it somewhat simple. All right, so considering your requirements, GPT-4 says, I'll provide you a simple implementation using Flask for the backend and Jinja 2 for templating along with CSS and JavaScript. And it reiterates the requirements and what we, what we agreed on. And then it starts giving me instructions. Now, this is when I will pop over to VS Code. And I've already filled in, started filling in these things with the files that it's given me here. So I have an app.py that it's given me and it's provided the code. I created a, a virtual environment which I have activated here. So I installed first pip install flask and then I created these files that it asked me to and then I started pasting in the code. So here's app.py and then here's our index and one of the issues that you run into is that these prompts these will break and then you'll have to ask it to please continue and oftentimes it will start over from the beginning and you'll have to regenerate the response or like try to prompt it and say please continue from the very last line you complete you know it can and it eats up your limited prompts you only get 25 prompts for every three hours from gpt4 and that'll eat those up and it's a waste of time so we're gonna do something more intelligent here so please continue there's the rest of our index.html, and we've pasted it over here into VS Code. We have created the style CSS, and let's copy that code over. Good. And it looks complete, and let's copy the JavaScript over and save that. And then we should be able to run it. So I've opened a terminal here in VS Code, new terminal, and the terminal here down on the bottom. That's where I ran the pip command so i'm going to go python i'm running python 3 so i'm going to say python 3 app.py can you just say app i don't know okay and it gives us a server here so we will pop over here 127.thatstuff.5000 and here's our app hey this is looking pretty good already it's responsive, it's good, I would use this. Okay, add a new task, let's see if it works. Test this app. Add, good, and we have a check mark and an X, can we edit it? Oh wow, test this app. Cool, and save, cool, good, okay. And then when we complete that, 
it disappears and goes to completed tasks. This is great. Can I uncheck it? And it comes back. Wow, this is great. This is great. First try, right? Okay. So now I want to do something a little bit more complicated here to make this work a little bit better. So now I'm going to get out of ChatGPT. We're done with ChatGPT. And we're going to move over to move this down here the playground and if you don't know about the playground a lot of people don't know about the playground this is where you can access the models directly in a way that allows you to configure them chat gpt has a system prompt that is hard coded that tells it what it is and how it should interact but if you come into the playground you can write your own system prompt and tell it how you want it to act which is which is really powerful so what we're going to do we're going to come into the playground we're going to change the mode to chat and we're going to change the model to GPT-4 if we have access to it. We're going to take our maximum length and we're going to turn it all the way up. And that is going to be so helpful. And then in the system prompt, we're going to say something like, You are a helpful coding assistant and pair programmer working with a human user. And you can get you can get specific here. Let's look back at the prompt we used originally for a description of our app and these commands we want to put into the system prompt. So you are working on a to do app with the following features. Okay. Uh, so we're giving, we're, we're pro, this is like using chat GPT, except we're programming it before we even start talking to it. We're programming it to understand what we're working on. So I'm also going to include, this is our current code. Okay. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get our app.py, app.py, and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to, on a new line, do three dashes. I saw somewhere that this is a good way of separating content in your prompts. So here's our index.html. Okay. And our, we probably don't need the style. Well, let's put it in there. Script.js23 style.css. Okay. And they're all in there. Please ask any clarifying questions before proceeding if necessary. Okay, now we have programmed this. Great. And we can start working with our code and modifying things. So let's take another look at our application running here. It's pretty good. Uh, what changes might we want to make? Let's, let's add categories. Okay. I want to add cat categories where I can group tasks. Sure, we can add a category feature to the do, do app. Here's what I'll update. It's going to come up with a plan for us. Okay, so it's generated code for that. It's going to give us Python code, and it's not going to give us the complete code again. That's good, because that would be a waste of our tokens. So it's going to be efficient here, and we can also tell it in the system prompt to try to be efficient or there, I mean, there's some other things we can do we'll talk about later. But for now, we want to go from the beginning to adding these routes. And we have our add method and then add category. So we're going to overwrite these. And that should be our new code for that. And then our HTML, it says the rest of the code remains the same. And then we're going to add or modify the container div in the middle. So there it is. And it's all right. Yep. Save that. The rest of the code. This will have the ability to create categories, so we should be done. Let's go back and see. Refresh this. Nice. We got a new category. So let's try this. Home. Add category. Home. We got it down there. We're going to add a task. Fix the door. And we have a drop down here. Good. Let's try to add. Oh, now here we have a problem because I just added a task and I am not seeing it. And what am I seeing down here? I don't see any errors or anything. So now we have an opportunity to go back, figure out what's going on. 
I added a cat and I'm going to continue because basically we're going to, we're going to have a little conversation here for each little increment change that we make. So while I'm on this task, I want to add categories. I'm going to continue this conversation. I added a category, then a task, but I didn't see it appear. Okay. And then before I hit enter, I am going to take this HTML code and I am going to make sure our system prompt has the changes that it has made. Okay. This is important. So here's our app.py. Good. This is our current draft. This is our current editor code. Okay. Apologies for the computer. Okay. And I may have confused it here because I put it in the system prompt, the changes that it already gave me. So no, that's okay. Let's, it seems template code is not shown in my, let's, let's let it keep going here. My previous prompts. Here's the missing task template code that should be added in place of the uh, of comments in the index.html file. So it's saying it forgot something in the HTML file. Replace the oh rest of the completed. Oh, I see. I've I've um I've deleted the code. It 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 will sometimes do this where it offers you a bunch of code and there's it's not like a consistent copy and pasteable block or you'll remove some of your stuff. So this is an instance where we can come in and take advantage of Copilot probably and it's gonna know what we're trying to do. So for let's see what are we doing here. Well yeah okay so we'll just like if we start this I bet it's gonna give me something pretty similar to what was generated over here on the left just glancing at it so let's give it a try okay then we'll come down here do the same thing and let's see what it gave us down here this is going to pro i think this is a little smarter so we'll use these code snippets that it generated okay and then let's go back to our app refresh it. Oh, hey, look, it already showed up on the task that we had from before. So let's create a new category, work, we add category, home, work. We have completed tasks under both of those, which I kind of don't like. Email, boss, add. Okay. Everything else seems to be working as expected. Okay. So let's go back now. This is this is the the key here. So we're gonna come back. We've already updated our code here, but we don't have the latest HTML in our system prompt. So I'm gonna put the latest HTML into the system prompt. Now this works. Okay. So we're gonna delete all of this. Our code now does all of this stuff. Okay. So now we're gonna start with a new task. We want to kind of clean this up. Let's group all of the completed tasks at the bottom. Change the complete button to a check mark and the delete, the remove, the remove button to a trash can. In the completed tasks, include the category next, next to the task rather than within each category. All right. And then I'll go through the process of doing that. You get the idea. We don't need to finish this. This is the process that I will do. Once I have completed this, I'll come back to the system. You know, once I've done this conversation and implemented this code change, I'll come back to the system prompt. I'll update it with the latest code and I'll start this code, this conversation over with the next uh, task, the next feature or bug that we want to address. And doing it this way allows for a lot of flexibility. First of all, the assistant responses are going to reach their maximum length, whereas ChatGPT seems to be like moody and some days it'll give you longer responses than others. This is going to give you your maximum length because you set it to. And it's also going to allow you to kind of work in this loop where you're not having this long conversation where the bot is getting confused. Okay. So another thing I would do in my system prompt is I will, um, add references. This is our current editor code. Use these separators. 
and I will say like if we're using if we're if we're going to use the chat gpt gpt4 conversational api for example uh, i'll go to their documentation gpt doesn't under the gpt doesn't let's see it's chat completion it's this one gpt4 doesn't know how to use gpt4 it knows about text da vinci 3 but the api is used differently so if you just ask it to implement code to talk to gpt4 it will implement the wrong code because it doesn't know about the chat completion api so I will just take this and copy the explanations here along with the example code, okay? And I'm going to put that into the system prompt here to, inf you know, and and if I and if with this used OpenAI, you know, I would have some feature up here like OpenAI API prioritizes tasks, and for the OpenAI API, please implement according to the following documentation and example code. Okay. And then now it knows, I'm going to take out these line numbers. Don't need to waste space with those. Now it has within its brain before we even start a reference about how to implement that API. And you can do this with any API. You can just dump the documentation in here and then have it understand how to how to implement that in the code one other thing i will do is here is say my config options are stored in config.py with the following values and then i'll have like open ai api key and then you know whatever other api or or sensitive inf information that or configuration options that you want the code to be able to reference you can include in like a config file now we are not passing forward back and forth sensitive information you have a consistent place where you're keeping things and i think that's basically it so let me know how it goes and if you guys have any improvements upon this i would love to hear them all right thank you